And guys, what is going on? I hope you all had a pretty good day today. This is the Club of the Man 1993. And I'm coming at you live for my live review of this week's episode of NXT UK, the April 17th, 2019 edition of NXT UK. It's the first of a few tapings, probably about three shows. That's three or four shows, I think, we're going to be getting uh, from uh, WrestleMania Access at the... Um, at the Brooklyn Pier 12 in Brooklyn, New York, which, of course, I was there live in attendance for WrestleMania Access. Unfortunately, I didn't get to really watch any of the matches. Um, but um, but I was able to, of course, you know, check out the show this week. I'm sorry, again, this review's coming kind of late. I'm going to try to review NXT in an hour also before I go to bed, even though I'm pretty tired. But I'm just catching up again, just busy with the holidays and whatnot. You know, it's life. But um, overall... That was a strong episode of NXT UK. Uh, we mostly had just a couple of exhibition matches. We had a nice, um, you know, main event. Again, it's continued to establish another tag team for sure that I've definitely slowly become more of a fan of for sure. I got a couple of announcements for next week. Of course, we also got a big, you know, bombshell drop at the end with a challenged rematch, um, seeing if the champion will come through and accept the challenge or not. So, of course, we will see what happens with that. Well, let's of course let's get right to this review because we have a few things to talk about. Uh, what's up, Tyler? Thank you for joining me live. Um, so we'll talk about NXT UK, and then again, I'll watch NXT and do that live review in probably about an hour. So we started off with a match with um the Coffee Brothers, Joe and Mark from Gallus, taking on the team of Raul Mendoza, who I believe should go to 205 Live, and Umberto Carrillo. Of course, since you know it's in America, and even though you know I said you know. Uh, anytime NXT UK superstars have had a shot in America, except for like, I mean, like Tyler Bate and like you know Pete Dunne, like those that they you know that you know America knows pretty well already, they're still good to know some of the, these guys basically. Um, so you don't hear the crazy you know chance that you know happens you know when they're over, they're overseas, which the last one they're going to be in, in um in Scotland, I believe. Also, speaking of Scotland, also I did read somewhere online that Noam Dar's knee injury is not as severe uh, as they expect. Things are just like, like like a bruised bone or something like that. So thank goodness. Like, I thought for both him and Mark Andrews suffered some pretty severe injuries in that pretty gruesome match it got. But of course, we're going to be seeing Mark Andrews in action next week in a tag team match. Of course, we'll get to that announcement towards um, later on in this review. But uh, we had a match. It was it was it was a coffee first taking on Mendoza and Carrillo. Not a bad match. They gave Carrillo and Mendoza some time to shine. This match, as you know, Carrillo's doing good on 205 Live so far. And, you know, I definitely would like to see it at Mendoza, of course. Get a shot there also. That's where I feel that he fits perfectly as well. And, of course, you know, 205 Live, he's a couple of new faces as well, losing Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander, moving on to, you know, bigger and better things for sure. As I, of course, I'm glad that those two are getting opportunities. But to start a match for the Coffee Brothers, but at this point, again, where are, are they really going now that, you know, they didn't win the UK title or the tag titles. So I guess just, you know, keep their momentum going. But again, they don't really have any other, like, you know, feuds going on right now. So uh, we'll see what happens, of course, down the line. As eventually, I believe they will be at least get a run with, with the UK tag titles. Um, I don't know, maybe, you know, Joe will go after the UK title again. Because uh, obviously it's still looking like that Jordan Devlin will be the first person to challenge Walter after. Walter hopefully has a rematch um, against Pete Dunn based off what we got in that promo to end this show. Um, can you do best and worst feuds? I would, but I actually already did that one already um, for on this channel, Tyler. But maybe again some other day, or, or we'll, we'll talk about them again some other time. But thank you, though, for the suggestion for sure, buddy. Um, but um, so not not a bad match. Uh, just put over the Cog Bros again. But again, where are we going to, you know? We'll see him go next. Not sure. We had an interview with Cassius Ono backstage saying that he was there to show everyone the authentic European UK style. He picked on Laguerre for taking up the three uh, bookings in, in a day, saying quality counted above uh, quantity, basically. So we're going to have a match between them next week as well as basically, you know, um, Ono's trying to prove that, you know, um, uh, that Laguerre is a small fish in a big pond, basically. Well, Cash is not Cassius, as the Browns are pronounced his name. Um, we corrected them. Of course, we get a recap again of um, what happened with um, Walter and Pete Dunn at the NXT UK, and and members of the roster gave their opinions. Uh, Barth. 
Marcel Barthel and Fabian Eichner said they had no opinion. Jordan Devlin said he could he couldn't care less about a rematch between the two of them. And then of course Walter walked out, had a brief stare down, and then walked away. But again, probably teasing again an eventual match with Walter and Jordan Devlin. As again, you know, Devlin's not pretty much almost all he well, again. Devlin's one of those superstars in the UK. It's not almost all he can at this point in the UK. To the fact that you know, obviously another challenge. With him for UK championship, you know, it's definitely on its way, but he's probably not going to be the one to dethrone Walter. But, of course, we'll get to that, and, of course, later on. We have Bomber Dave Mastiff making his first appearance since NXT uh, UK takeover Blackpool when he defeated Eddie Dennis in a um, in a notice qualification match. Of course, Eddie, Eddie's only appeared one time since also. This is uh, Mastiff's first appearance ever since. He faced off with Kona Reeves of NXT. Again, just don't really care for the finest, but he basically squashed the finest in about a little under five minutes, uh, being with the Cannonball Sent on. Um, uh, Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster basically in our interview backstage, based on that, they have goals for sure. And they, of course, they talk about how they're going to be facing um, next week, they'll be facing Mustache Mountain, which should be, be a pretty good tag team match with them. And um, Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews should be a fun, you know, high fly batch. I look forward to seeing. Uh, and then we see oh, Mastiff being interviewed backstage before he was confronted by Wolfgang. They traded words and started shoving each other, but they were broken up, basically teasing that we're going to have probably a match in a few between these two as well with a Wolfgang and Mastiff. So, all right, we'll see how that goes. We then had, ah, oh, this was sad to watch, but, you know, it, the story worked for sure. But um, Rhea Ripley taking on... Again, how do you not? How could you not love this woman, Casey Canton Zero? Again, she's small, she's cute. You know, you can't help but being jealous of Ricochet for you know being with her. But you know, she's just adorable to watch both in the ring and out of the ring. Um, of course, you got to see her. Of course, in the Women's World Rumble match, she pull off a couple of crazy little stunts. So she's definitely got a bright future in the company. But um, uh, but uh, Canton Zero took on Rhea Ripley. She got some offense, and of course, this was a rematch from the May Young Classic last year, as uh, Ripley was the one who took Canton Zero out of the match. Uh, but, of course, she eventually would defeat uh, Canton Zero with the Riptide. And afterwards, she locked Canton Zero in her own in very cloverly and picked her up um, and just, you know, show off her power and whatnot. Backstage, of course, Ripley could continue to you know, pick on Canton Zero and just start just, you know, just digging into her before Piper Nevin showed up and basically, you know, just, like, scared off Rhea Ripley and Piper was just checking on Casey make sure she's okay. But, again, teasing an eventual match, probably maybe in – um. Scotland probably well actually would work in Scotland because that's where uh, Piper Nevin's from I believe, um, but probably we'll get a match between uh, Piper Nevin and um, Rhea Ripley in uh, Scotland. So I look forward to seeing of course you know where that goes. Uh, so that could definitely be a nice little you know non women's title feud for um, NXT UK. Besides feeling like, uh, feeling an actual feud, not just like you know an exhibition match basically. So I look forward to seeing where they go with that. Um, uh, uh, rivals. Hmm. Top ten rivals. I don't know if I've done that a rivals one, but I could try rivals. Um, Tyler, that's a good suggestion. Oh, uh, why can't back to pay after me? Yeah, I don't get either. Why are they having like you know, um, money to bank and then two straight B show pay per views? I, I I don't I don't get that. It should have been backlash first, then money in the bank, then extreme rolls, which should be the right way to go. But um, that's what we're gonna be getting. But you know, thank you for yourself, as always in the live chat, Tyler. Um, uh, we then see um, Ginny attempted to be interviewed, but she just stared down the interview and just walked off. Basically, just asked, you know, her comments from, you know, her loss in her tag, not her tag, in her women's title match last week. But obviously, you know, again, Ginny's not going not gonna to be out of the women's title picture. She's going to be back in there someday. And a certain Tony did put on a good match last week. Um, now we have our main event, a non title tag team match. Um, the grizzled young veterans, James Drake and Liverpool's number one, Zach Gibson, taking on um, the team of Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams, who've been on like a winning streak. You know, definitely well established as like, you know, that underdog babyface tag team that, you know, obviously they had a little bit of, you know, differences at first, uh, but, you know, they've kind of come together and, you know, really worked well with each other. Before, of course, Gibson cuts a promo. Talk about how the Grizzly Knight veterans were the best tag team anywhere, and the NXT UK tag team titles would soon be the most important titles in all of WWE. Um, basically, uh, we had of course Jordan Williams come in and thought they put on a pretty good match, telling a good story there. Made it look like, of course, you know that they had a chance to win 
as um, the Swanton bomb was hit on James Drake. But um, Zach Gibson then would pull them out of the ring and they just walk away and take a count out loss. Obviously, those set up for a tag title match down the line with um, you know, Grizzly Young Veterans and Jordan Williams. I don't think Jordan Williams would dethrone um them, but I think they will put on a good show, and at least we will look like a much more established tag team. Still don't know yet who will be the one to dethrone the Grizzly Young Veterans, but I don't see I don't see a tag title change hands quite yet uh for them. So I think that's we got there. And then finally, before the show ended, we had um um, Pete Dunn, you know, speaking for the first time since his loss at um, Takeover New York, and he dropped the title after 685 days. He would not walk away after just one loss. Um, they show clips, of course, of Dunn, um, of Dunn, you know, what he's done the past two years. He talked about his successor, winning the UK title, main eventing Takeover, being on top in NXT, and being in the Royal World match on Raw. He knew if what it meant to be champion. And he basically said, you know, he gave he did Walter a favor and gave him an opportunity. Now he claims he knows what to expect from Walter now. So he says, I gave you an opportunity. Why can't you give me one return of favor and give me a rematch? So I'm pretty sure probably sometime in Scotland or who knows, maybe I'll, will it be in will it be at WrestleMania Access? I don't know. Maybe I'll wait till Scotland, but I think we will be seeing a, a UK title rematch with Walter and Pete died. I thought their first match game was really good. Again, it showed that you know both these guys had to go out of their way to you know do some different stuff to be champion. I think they can put. I look forward to see what they can do for a second match. We'll see what happens though. But that is it for NXT UK this week, guys. We give it a B. Thought it was a good show. Uh, they should bring back uh, brand pay per views. Yeah, brand pay per views. I'd say, but not two every month. Like you know, in May, do one for SmackDown. June, you know, be the, a dual brand pay per view. July, be Raw. You don't need like you know, like Extreme Rules and um and Battleground in July. You can use just Extreme Rules. August, you know, Summer Slam's a dual brand. September, be a SmackDown. October, be Raw. November, be SmackDown. Well, I'm sorry, November, um, the Survivor Series. December, be SmackDown. You know what I mean? Like you know, one pay per view a month, but. B shows be brand specific again because it will definitely you know shorten pay per views. We have much many more um you know non title uh, feuds and it'll make things a lot more better. But uh, thank you for um your stuff in the live chat, Tyler. Again, give NXT UK a B. I will be back up here probably in about an hour live again to review NXT guys. What are your thoughts on NXT UK this week? Your thoughts down in the comment section below. And be sure to slap a like on this video. Subscribe or comment on my channel. Follow me on Twitter at Demarabody3. Also check out my first WrestleMania experience documentary as well. All of down left down in the description box down below. And with that, guys, I'll see you guys all in an hour for my NXT review. Unless I get too tired and I'll wait till the morning. But we'll see what happens. So until then, guys, have a great rest of your night. And peace out, everybody.